Okay, today we're going to talk about our lives should be a witness for Jesus. This is a short message and then we will have another message after that. Okay, and uh, so our lives should be a witness for Jesus, that, that our lives should glorify Jesus. Our lives should show the life of Jesus, the goodness of Jesus. Galatians 5.22 but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, that's patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If we have a close relationship with God and bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we are already witnessing for Jesus. So when we have a, a close relationship with Him, then Jesus' love and joy and peace will show through us then we are already witnessing for Jesus. Our life will show that Jesus is alive with us. And uh, that's the main uh, point of the message today, that, that we should you know, train ourselves and the people that they uh, glorify God all the time. Okay? And then John 13, 35. By this you will know that you are my disciples. All will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. When we have sincere love for people, people will see our life and see Jesus in us. So when we have uh, th the presence of God and the motivation, the mo motivation of God from us, then uh, we can... Um, Okay, when we have the motivation of Jesus in us, then uh, our life will show. Our life will show and, uh, you know, when we have this joy from the Lord, if we have a continual relationship with God, the joy of the Lord will show through us. And then when we have this love for people, we love them, we care about them. And we want to bless them, we want to help them. And... Uh, when we have this heart, when we have this heart that we want to bless people. As Christians, we don't just want to care about ourselves. The more we care about people, the more we'll glorify God, the more we'll be blessed. So that's, that's very important that we see that uh, it's important to, to love God so that His life will show through us. And then our life will, will uh, glorify God. Our life will show to other people that we are alive. Okay. And then Colossians 4 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Our speech with love and care for people will let people see Jesus in us. So, you know, when we have this love and care, when we have this peace in us, and then it should show in our speech and our action that because we have a heart to bless people. I thank God that He has given me this heart that when I see people, I want to always want to bless them. I won't always want to help them. If they have any need, I always, always want to help them. I want to strengthen their spiritual life. So I hope that we all have this have this uh, spiritual life in us that we want to bless people, that we want to help people. Okay, and then Mark 5, 19. But said to me, to him, go home to your friend and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you when we have experienced any work of God. You know, this is the, uh, the man who had demons driven out. Demons were driven out from him. And then when we, uh, and Jesus told him to go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. And then when we have experienced any work of God, we should be filled with thankfulness and joy and tell people what God has done for us. We should remember all the things God has done for us. So whenever we experience any work of God, we should remember it. We should thank God for it and Stick it in our mind. Yes, Lord has given me peace and joy and love. And the Lord has healed me. The Lord has given me 
uh, the gift to help people. So we should remember all this. The Lord has saved my life uh, in certain situation, ha has protected me in certain situation and opened a way for me to bless me in certain situation. We should remember all this and then we sh when we talk to people, we can glorify God and tell them what God has done for us. So first is the spiritual life in us, the joy and the peace and the love, and then we care about people and then we uh, our speech, our love for people and our witness of what Jesus has done for us. So if every Christian is like that, then the church will for sure grow. But many Christians don't have this motivation. So we should teach them and train them to pay attention to what God has done in their life. When they pray, they notice they have peace and joy and the burdens go away. They remember this. Especially when they learn to pray for people and then they see other people experience the work of God and then they can tell people, I pray for someone and they experience this work of God. So uh, we should all be aware of God has done in us and through us. And then we can tell people. I have many, many uh, testimonies to tell people because I continue to experience Him. I love Him. I like Him. And then I uh, help people. I pray for people. So people experience His work all the time. And then, so when a person says, I have insomnia, I have uh, pain in somewhere, I have uh, unhappiness in my life, I have pressure, then I would tell them that God has helped me with this uh, to overcome these problems. Or I have prayed for someone and to overcome this problem. So, uh, so I would tell people that God is alive. God is blessing me and so He will bless you also. So that's how we can witness for Jesus. And I hope so uh, everyone will learn this. Everyone will train people. Romans 5, 7, for scarcely uh, for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So uh, what, hardly will a righteous man die uh, that if someone to die for a righteous man, maybe for a good man someone uh, would dare to die. But God demonstrates His love for us that while we were still sinners, that Christ died for us. So witness to Jesus, so witness to people about God's love for us. Uh, he did not want to see us perish. He sent His Son to die for us. That is a very high price. Jesus paid for all our sins. When we repent and trust in Jesus, then God rejoices over us and will definitely give us eternal life. So we should train our members so that they witness for Jesus naturally. So we will tell people that Jesus died for sinners. Jesus died and give eternal life to sinners, not to good, uh, not to people who are perfect. We don't have to be perfect to receive His salvation. Uh, when we have sins, He has died for us already. So when we trust in Him, that He'll forgive our sins and give us eternal life. So we should tell people we should tell people that, uh, that God is doing these wonderful things for us, that God is giving us salvation and God cares about you. So we are happy to witness for Jesus. Okay, so uh, that was the, uh, uh, what I've talked about in the last session. Uh, this is, uh, I will conclude it, that it's very important that we train our members, that they experience the peace and love and joy of God. So. They can remember what God has, you know, how, what they will experience when they pray to God. They will experience this peace and joy and love and burdens go away and they experience strength so that they can face difficulties. So when they are filled with this joy all the time, people will see that God is alive in them. And then they can tell people about, people about this wonderful work of God. And also when, uh, when they, uh, you know, when they pray and help people, pray for people, and then people experience God, and then they can tell people. And then, uh, and then they, they love people. Their love for people will also be a witness to other people. And then when they, um, 
have the chance to tell people about Jesus' salvation, that Jesus died for us while we were sinners, that uh, we can be forgiven, and when we trust in Jesus as our Savior, we can have eternal life. So if we are filled with joy all day long, now why do many Christians don't have joy? The reason is many Christians just worry about things, worry about money and uh, life. Uh, so we need to learn to trust in God, and God can really help us. So it's very important that we say, Lord, you will help me. You will help me overcome the problems. You'll be with me. Even though there are difficulties now, when there is a coronavirus, there is difficulty. That, but we know that God is with us. And so we trust in God for uh, special ways that He can provide for us, that we uh, our needs are met. That, and then we can tell people how God is alive in our, in our life. So... Um, the Bible tells us that God is in control of the whole world. The whole world is in God's hand. And God has the power to help us all in the difficult times. So we can trust in Jesus and say, Lord, the Lord is helping me. And so I relax in Him. I trust in Him. And then God will help me. Okay. And then the next uh, title we have here is Positive Attitude and Optimism in God. Now, why do I have this message? Because I notice many people don't have a positive attitude. Very often they have negative attitude and pessimism. Many people, they, uh, they feel very pessimistic about life. Uh, they don't have a positive attitude. Sometimes even ministers, sometimes ministers say that, oh, this ministry is too hard, and then, and then we feel pessimistic. But we should learn to say, God is blessing me and God is with me so I can trust in God. When I have today, when I have the provision of today, I trust in God and God will help me tomorrow or the problems, how to overcome the problems tomorrow. Okay, Life is full of difficulties and many people, including pastors, can feel pessimistic and lose their joy. So many people can lose their joy. If we feel pessimistic, will lose joy, strength, motivation, and a strong relationship with God because pessimism takes away our faith. So if a person is pessimistic all the time, he won't have joy and peace and strength, and he, it's hard for him to have a close relationship with God. But when we say, even though things are difficult, I know God is in charge, and I know that in heaven, God doesn't have to apologize to me. God doesn't have to say to me, sorry, I didn't help you. I forgot to help you. So we can, uh, when we trust in God all the time, we notice that God is helping us all the time. And God don't, doesn't have to apologize to us because He will for sure do His part. When we trust in Him, He will do His part. Actually, you know, everything is done by Him. He, he uses us to bless people. He gives us what we need. He will help us. So we don't have to say, oh, uh, things are difficult. We say, Things are difficult now, but He will have a way to help me. And when I have today, I have the food of today, I have what I need today, I don't have to worry. And then three, we feel pessimistic when we look at problems and our failure, and when we compare with other people. So when we look at uh, the difficulties, then we'll feel pessimistic. But if we look at God, we say, when I pray, His peace comes to me that God is with me, God gives me strength, then we won't feel pessimistic. Optimism comes from choosing to believe God's promises and a strong relationship with God. It's not natural to do that. Our nature is to look at problems. Below are some Bible verses uh, that, uh, that help us to be optimistic. So optimism comes from choosing to believe God's promises that He has promises for us. He promised to, be, to bless us. He promised to be with us. So we trust in God for His promises. Okay, I want to say to anyone watching me, if you are on uh, Facebook, Pastor Yip, you can go to um, Global Fire Missions Ministries in Facebook, and there the video is clearer. Okay? Uh, I noticed that some of the people here are watching me at 
uh, at Pastor Yip. Uh, I want to say that Global Fire Missions Ministries, you search for Global Fire Missions Ministries, there the, uh, the slides are better, okay? Oh, there's, okay, I didn't set something right here. Sorry. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm adjusting the um, Okay, sorry. Okay, so these are Bible verses that encourage us, that tell us that God is helping us all the time. Sorry. Okay, positive attitudes and optimism in God. 1 Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So these are Bible verses that give us optimism, that God is helping us. So uh, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. When we love him, God will prepare for us things we never imagined. That things we never imagined. That God will prepare for us. Uh, so we, and we can look back in our life and see that God has blessed us. God has blessed us with many blessings. So we trust in God. He's blessing me uh, when I love Him. So I want to love Him more and trust in Him more. And then He will continue to bless me. Okay, Mark 9.41 For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, surely I say to you, you will by no means lose your reward. So when we even uh, give a cup of cold water uh, because uh, someone belongs to Christ, when we do it to a Christian or when we do it to a uh, non-Christian in order to bring them to Jesus, then we'll not lose our reward. So when we serve God, when we bless people, we, we can say, I'm optimistic about it because when I, have, when I serve God with a pure motive, then God is happy with me and God will bless me. Hallelujah. And then John 12, 26, If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. So, if we serve Him, the Father in heaven will honor us. He will honor us. He will say, you serve me with a pure motive. I'm very happy with you. I will bless you. Uh, I will remember you and I will reward you. And uh, Philippians 4.13, I'm sorry, uh, because there's some problem with the PowerPoint today. So I can do all things through, through Christ. That in Jesus Christ, we can do all things. That all things are possible for me. Okay, and then whenever we feel pessimistic, we find out why we are pessimistic and we choose to believe in God's promises. And, uh, and that God is very happy with us when we love Him and serve Him. So we can use the five steps to victory. Sorry, today there are some letters shifting. Uh, so when we feel pessimistic, we'll find out why. Do we worry about money? Do we worry about our ministry? Do we worry about our health? And we, uh, we hold on to God's promises that He will prepare for those who love Him. Things we never imagined that He will prepare for us good things. So we can trust in Him and rely on Him for Him to, to bless us. And then we'll say, I'll just wait to see God's blessing on me, for me. That I don't have to worry. I will continue trusting Him. Okay, the five steps to victory. First, be aware of how we are pessimistic. How we are, uh, first is aware. And second is destructive. I believe that when we are pessimistic, it's destructive. So whenever, 
this five step to victory, we can handle different problems. It's very important that we learn to be aware. Aware means we pay attention to how we feel, to pay attention to what's happening inside us. We notice that if we are unhappy, then we are aware that we are unhappy. And then we know that it's destructive. And then ap apply biblical principles. So what does the Bible tell me to do? The Bible tells me to trust in God and rely on Him. He'll uh, provide for me and He'll help me. And then pray to have forgiveness and strength. So I'll pray to God to forgive me and give me strength. And then choose to obey God. Choose to believe God's promises and be optimistic. So I choose to believe that God must have a way. God must have a way to solve my problem so I can just rely on Him and trust in Him. He will for sure help me. And then we can overcome pessimism by believing. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry today. Okay, by believing in the promises of God. So when we, we, uh, we can overcome the pessimism when we trust in God that He will help me, that He will keep His promises. So I trust in God. You know, in the last days in the Great Tribulation, the suffering will be much greater than what we have today. Now what we have now is the beginning of the, uh, it, we have not entered the Great Tribulation yet. It's the beginning stage. Uh, this coronavirus is more serious than any other uh, pestilence we had in the past. It's a warning to us that the end time is going to come. And in the end time, the Bible said that the beast will force people to worship the beast and to receive the mark on the hand and the forehead. And, uh, and then if people want to buy food and sell things and do business, they have to have the seal of the beast. And then, but the Bible says that if anyone, the third angel declare, if anyone uh, worship the beast, the share will be in the eternal fire of hell. So there is no salvation for anyone who received the mark of the beast. So we must not receive the mark of the beast. And now if we don't receive the mark, very soon we'll, be, we'll run out of food. When we run out of food, what can we do? The only way is to trust in God. You know, the, the Bible tells us that God is in control of everything. In the Great Tribulation, when I study the book of Revelation more carefully, I noticed that it talks about that God actually is in control, that uh, the, all, the, uh, all the tribulation actually came with the permission of God. And the beast received the permission of God to, to have the power for 42 months. And uh, it's God who moves the nations, the kings, to give the power to the beast. So it's God who who let it happen. But when God let it happen, it's a time for Christians to, to totally rely on God. Because right now, a lot, a lot of Christians just rely on what they have, the food and the money. They, they don't rely on God totally. But in the future, we can only rely on God. We can only totally rely on God. And we have no other choice. And now, if if the Christ, if God doesn't help us, then Christians will die in, you know, die of no no water in a few days time. We'll die, but God for sure will keep the Christians safe. You know, there are Christians who are killed, but there will be Christians who went through the whole tribulation, because the last days and the uh, the last battle would be uh, the beast and the nations against the Christians and the Jews. So there will be still be Christians there. So we need to trust in God in that time and pray, Oh Lord, give me provision, give me food, give me uh, water, provide for us. And God can provide in a few ways. God can uh, give us the miracle of the f uh, five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people. That we have a little food, we can feed many people. Or God can just create food from nothing or God can 
help us to not to depend on food and water like Moses went up to Mount Sinai and he did not eat did not eat or drink for 40 days and nights so we can uh, trust in God for that at that time you know we just trust that God is in control there will be Christians who will live through the great tribulation God will protect us so we trust in God the more we trust in God the more God will protect us because this Christian who trusts in God has the power of the Holy Spirit upon him and he can do great things for God so I hope that we all learn to say yes I can have optimism in God I can trust in God totally I can rely on God totally okay and then positive attitude and optimism in God when we choose right attitudes God is pleased with us and bless us some right attitudes are so when we uh, choose right attitudes God is pleased with us and he'll bless us so um, first be honest and sincere to God and to people that we are we want to be honest and sincere that we trust in God only we rely on God only we depend on God only okay and then B want to glorify God and want to bless and help people so we want to glorify God and help and uh, want to bless and help people so we have this attitude I always want to glorify God I always want to help people and C don't necessarily look at great result and great success want to be faithful it is great to have many people to church but that's not the highest goal so we don't necessarily look for great results and large group of people it doesn't have to be large group of people but if we have many people that's great if we can help many people that's great but if we cannot it's fine we continue to be faithful to help the few we can help whoever we can help we continue to help and then God will be happy with us okay so and then so we don't necessarily look for great result even when we help a few people when we love God and let them know God is wonderful God is great and then these people uh, experience God and then they will be motivated and God is happy with us even when we help a few people and then when these people are strong they can bring more people to Christ so we don't the goal is not in large number but in the quality of their life when they have the joy of the Lord they have the strength of the Lord then we are happy and we thank God for that okay and then D want to obey and submit to God in every little way so every little way even in the use of money uh, in uh, faithful in everything in how we talk to people how we help people always be uh, uh, always obey God never disobey God for instance like in paying taxes we need we want to pay tax we want to be faithful in our tithing and offering we want to be faithful in everything and obey God in everything and then never want to cheat or give the devil a foothold so never want to tell a lie uh, even a small lie I've seen pastors tell lies I've seen Christians tell lies so we want to be faithful to God and never tell lies um, sometimes people in order to you know make things look great they will tell lies but we're not to please people we we're, we're to please God when we please God God will bless us and then people will will follow us and they will will uh, the Christians can gather together and be willing to put down one selfish desire so when we have selfish desire we say Lord I'm willing to put down those selfish desires I, I'm willing to put down my own desire and trust in God okay okay now uh, we come to the next topic how to raise up people to serve God how to raise up people uh, from our congregation and also when we uh, bring someone to Jesus we can start to bring the person uh, to serve God help the person to serve God first God honors those who serve him so if uh, John 12 26 if anyone serves him my father will honor him okay so our father in heaven will honor us when we serve him God is very happy when we serve him 
I'm sorry the pictures will cover some of the words because that's uh, uh, there's something wrong with the PowerPoint today okay so good and faithful servants can enter God's joy uh, so when we are faithful in Matthew 21 this is a parable of the talents when the uh, servant with the five talents and the two talents came to the master and give to the master what they've earned then Jesus said to them well done good and faithful servant you are faithful over a few things I will make you in charge of many things enter into the joy of your master so when we are good and faithful servant will be praised by the Lord and then will be uh, rewarded and will enter the joy of the Lord and will enter eternal reward so I hope that we hunger for hunger to serve God we want to serve God because God will bless those who serve him now serving God doesn't necessarily becoming a pastor some people are called to be pastors but everyone can serve God by glorifying God by living a life of uh, of joy and peace and love <clears throat> that we help people we glorify God in our words and action and we bring people to Jesus we help people to believe in Jesus all these are serving God and welcoming people to the church and talking to them listening to them helping them and these are all serving God so when we serve God when we serve God God is happy with us God is happy with us and God will bless us okay so I hope that that we hunger to serve God we want to serve God we want to do things that God is happy with and then there is warning to those who don't serve God and they can enter everlasting punishment Matthew 25 45 now this is the parable of the uh, of the sheep and the goats the sheep are the ones who have done the good things to Jesus brothers and the goats are the one who have not done to the to Jesus brothers and then they have not done to Jesus and then because you did not do it to one of the least of these you did not do it to me and they will go into the everlasting fire prepare uh, you will enter the uh, eternal punishment and then in another verse it says that you enter the everlasting fire prepare for the devil and and his angels and then so they will enter into everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life now we are saved by grace through faith not by good works but when we are saved then we'll glorify God when we are saved we'll glorify God we'll our life will glorify God and will serve God we're not saved by serving God but every Christian has the responsibility to serve God if a Christian doesn't serve God uh, in Matthew 25 the two parables the second and the third parable told us that the servant who bury the talents will have to face the judgment of God and then have to go into the uh, the place of gnashing of teeth into the outer darkness and then the ones who did not do it to Jesus brothers to have to enter into the fire prepare for the devil and, and his angels so the Bible tells us that on a day of judgment we are not judged according just by our faith but by the fruit of our faith our fruit of our faith proves that we have we have faith now we are saved always by grace we are never saved by doing good but when a person is saved then his life will show will have uh, he will serve God and he will show the fruit of salvation he will glorify God by his words and action and by his joy and by his ministry so uh, every single person uh, when we come to God that the, the faith would have fruit now you will ask me how about people who die uh, and then before they die we tell them about Jesus do they have a chance to glorify God now even when they witness to Jesus when this life came out from them and they glorify God and they say yes I want to believe in Jesus thank you Jesus whenever they have this manifestation of God's joy in them the 
or the faith in them, then they are bearing fruit. So when we are bearing fruit with our spiritual life, that our fruit, our spiritual life is bearing fruit, we show Christian life, we show God's love, we show God's joy, then we are glorifying God already. Then we are glorifying God already, and we are, uh, then we are serving God, and then God is happy with us. Of course, we want to serve God more. We don't just want to wait until we die, and then in the last moment we serve God. We want to serve God for our whole lifetime. We want to serve God all the time. The more we serve God, the more God is happy with us. The more we glorify God. So we tell people that it's blessed to serve God. And anyone can serve God when we have the joy of the Lord. So we, we want to uh, encourage people when they have the joy of the Lord, when they glorify God, when they're happy in the Lord, when they love God and love people, we tell them, your life is glorifying God. You are showing God's life. And then when you are uh, having this life and care about people, then God is happy with you. Then you are already serving God. But we want to be trained and then we can do more. When people are trained, they can do more. I thank God that for the training I have. And then I also, you know, God trains me and I train myself. God trains me and God gives me some thoughts of teaching. And then I would develop it. I would develop it so that I can do better and better. So this is how I grew in Jesus. So I hope that we all will do that. That we all will grow in Jesus to grow more and more. To we want to learn to serve God more. Hallelujah. So we want to pray for more workers for God. So Jesus said in Matthew 9, 37, Then He said to His disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of harvest to send out laborers. So to send out laborers to reap the harvest. That we want to uh, send people out. This person come to save someone from hell. So we, more laborers are needed because uh, the harvest is plentiful. There are many people who need to be saved. We want to help these people to believe in Jesus. We want to train people, to train people first of all to have this spiritual life, that they have this joy and love and care for people, and they have the wisdom to talk to people, to listen to people, to care about people, to be kind to people. First to the family members. It's very important that they love their spouse, love the children, love their parents, that the family is full of the love of God, that they trust in God, and then they glorify God, the whole life glorify God. Uh, then it will, it will be easier for them to serve God, and then the whole family will be serving God together. Okay? Delight in the Lord, and He will cause us to go higher it's important for spiritual life and ministry. Okay, So when we delight in the Lord, He will cause us to go higher, and this is important for our spiritual life and ministry. So rejoice in the Lord. Be happy because of the Lord. Isaiah 58, 14, Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. Now this uh, question mark is just uh, it's a problem with the PowerPoint today. And I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth and, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. And the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So when we delight ourselves in the Lord and He will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth. So when we are happy because of God. Now many people say, I have no reasons to be happy because of God. They don't find reasons. But when we count all the blessings, how He gives us joy and peace and love, and how He speaks to us to guide us to repentance, to guide us to trust in Jesus, how He guides us to grow and give us more strength to help people. So we remember all these things, how He protects us, how He gives us spiritual gifts, how He uses us, and how we, uh, can He help us to bring people to Jesus. So we remember all this and say, God is helping me to go higher and higher. When I trust in God, my life will go higher and higher. So it's very important in our spiritual life that we will delight in God. In our spiritual life, it's very important to delight in God, that we rejoice in God, that we say, God is wonderful. I am happy because of God. I enjoy God. 
that is delighting in God, delight in God Himself, in His goodness and His sufficient grace. So we delight in God. If people don't delight in God, very likely they are serving as a slave. So if they don't delight in God, then they are serving with burden. But when we delight in God, then, uh, then His grace is sufficient for us. Okay, motivated by God's grace to serve Him. God's love is great and He wants to bless us.